I would like to introduce you, uh, you Hubert Cario from uh, Red Hat, who is going to present about a uh, TLS test framework. Please welcome Hubert. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming for the presentation. Uh, as uh, Nico said, uh, I'll be talking about uh, TLS uh, testing and uh, mm, verifying that it's uh, actually correct and uh, properly configured. So, SSL is dead. <laughs> let's call. It, let's start calling it TLS. Uh, SSL was the first version that was actually uh, published, but uh, now all both both of those versions are uh, deprecated, are insecure, and you shouldn't use SSL. The only versions that are secure are TLS 1.0 and up. So, what is TLS? TLS is uh, Transport Layer Security. It's known from HTTPS, so basically every time you go to Gmail, you use uh, H, uh, you use TLS. Uh, it's also um, used for uh, email security, for Tor, for uh, Internet of Things uh, communication, uh, vo uh, voice over IP, uh, VPNs. Uh, so basically, any kind of security, uh, it's most likely will be TLS. So why we use TLS? Uh, first is confidentiality, so that uh, the contents of the communication are secret. The integrity, so we make sure that the communication uh, is as it was sent by the other side, so it wasn't modified um, in transit. And authenticity, so that the data comes from the person we think it comes from also in uh, subsequent messages. So like I said, TLS uh, is a very old protocol. Currently we are pushing more, uh, nearly 20 years of age. Um, if we are looking at the actual um, on, uh, on the wire data, since TL uh, TLS version 1.2 is very similar to SSL version 3, so over 20 years now. Over those years, uh, we had a lot of changes. Uh, nearly 70 RFCs was, were published that uh, either extend, update, or deprecate functionality in um, SSL or TLS. Uh, we have also six wildly deployed drafts that weren't actually um, standardized, accepted by the uh, Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, we have uh, something like 27 extensions uh, and there were a lot of uh, fixes for protocol and implementation bugs like uh, secure for secure renegotiation for fallback SCSV signaling um, cipher suite value uh, client hello padding uh, extended master secret that's uh, protection against uh, triple handshake that may the TLS very complex. Uh, currently we have uh, over 300 uh, cipher suites, uh, just the official ones, there are also unofficial ones used by a uh, very small uh, majority of, uh, minority of uh, clients and servers. Uh, we commonly use about 15 different key sizes and types. Uh, that includes uh, basically four different uh, crypto systems. Uh, commonly they are used something like 37 different uh, DV Hellman groups, uh, 16 signature and hash algorithm pairs. Uh, it's, a, it's a complex c protocol and most of it is a mess. <laughs> So, uh, if we want to test this stuff uh, using TLS libraries that are already uh, available to us, uh, it's uh, rather hard. Most of the TLS implementations really don't want to send invalid data uh, for some reason. Uh, so, it, it, also there's a problem that they want to deprecate old stuff that uh, they don't want to already uh, ship with SSL version 2 uh, added or uh, supported in the um, in the code so if we take the newest uh, open SSL you won't be able to test if the server on the other side actually supports or not SSL version 2 because uh, TLS 1.1 doesn't 
know how to generate a SSL version to client hello, so it won't uh, get the response from the other side. Now, we could also use uh, existing protocol fuzzers for testing TLS. Unfortunately, TLS is a complex protocol. There is a lot of state information that it needs to be maintained between the messages, and uh, the, um, there's also the question of uh, encryption. So you need to uh, check, uh, you need to be able to encrypt the messages and know which ones were already sent, which weren't sent, and stuff like that. So most of the protocol fuzzers actually are able to keep very simple or basically no state. So they are um, aimed at testing stuff like uh, HTTP, which doesn't have state, or SMTP, which has very very limited state. So that's why we started working on TLS fuzzer, which is the dedicated network uh, fuzzing or testing library. What uh, we... Basically, TLS Fuzzer uh, runs uh, on Python 2.6 and up, so basically on everything uh, you can imagine. So uh, uh, old, uh, old, uh, old distributions uh, shouldn't be a much, much of a problem. Uh, it has no native de dependencies, so as long as uh, Python runs on this thing, you can run a TLS Fuzzer. Uh, we currently have something like 60 test scripts that test different features or fields of uh, TLS protocol. That uh, translates to over 18,000 individual test cases. Uh, it's also relatively fast. Uh, on localhost, I'm able to test something like 300 test cases per second per core. Uh, it focuses on the new crypto and TLS uh, features. Uh, we are test we're using it uh, internally uh, at Red Hat for uh, testing new features we, uh, that are uh, being introduced to TLS libraries. So uh, this is the primary focus for, for the development. Uh, it's also unit tested. Currently we have uh, over 95% statement coverage and uh, we um, we it allowed us to find something like 20 issues in uh, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, NSS, including one CVE. While I'm calling it fuzzer now, uh, it's not, not yet a fuzzer. Uh, for now, it's just a framework uh, that will allow to build uh, a fuzzer. And also, while it will be a fuzzer then, it will be a TLS protocol fuzzer. So, it will uh, not uh, work on the level of uh, of bytes sent on the network. It will mostly focus on uh, modifying the messages, so not uh, not sending uh, invalid messages, but sending f invalid fields in the in the messages. So why should you use TLS Fuzzer? Uh, while uh, we will be testing uh, TLS implementations and uh, hopefully most of the uh, programmers that uh, we don't, uh, most of the libraries that we don't ship will start using TLS Fuzzer. The, pro the problem is that some things are configuration specific and uh, some behaviors might, uh, some uh, insecure behaviors may be caused by changes in configuration. There are uh, callbacks in the libraries. So if you have callbacks, uh, those callbacks may cause your uh, server to be insecure despite the underlying TLS library is secure. So uh, that helps with integration testing. Uh, also, you may have uh, some kind of black box like uh, um, UPS or a firewall or some kind of appliance and you want to uh, check if that appliance will be able, uh, if you will be able to connect to that appliance with some future, uh, future browsers, if, the, uh, if, if it won't have TLS 1.3 incompatibilities or TLS 1.4 incompatibilities. Because TLS as a protocol has a way to negotiate the version that is uh, mm, um, uh, that is commonly supported between the client and servers, but some servers implemented it wrongly. So that was one of the reasons what, why we needed the uh, fallback uh, CSV. 
So that's the, also the forward compatibility. And also you may want to test, uh, use TLS Fuzzer for testing uh, your server, your server configuration against obscure uh, clients. Since uh, TLS Fuzzer can generate basically any kind of messages, it can generate messages which are sent by uncommonly used uh, clients. And you may still want to uh, keep the uh, configuration that uh, is compatible with them. So you can uh, simulate basically if this, uh, that client and see if the server will respond and uh, negotiate the connection. So uh, if we want to do that, uh, we basically need to tell the uh, father first that uh, where to connect, which, which host, which port, uh, which kind of ciphers to uh, advertise and which, in which order, what kind of extensions to, to send, so we can send the SNI, so this is the virtual host support. Uh, we can do also support tech groups, so this will be for uh, Elliptic Curve Diffie Hellman, um, signature algorithms that are for TLS 1.2, and finally we uh, tell it to generate the client hello uh, with those uh, those values and 3.3 uh, which means TLS 1.2 on the wire and if we uh, as a response get a uh, server hello that means that the connection will proceed and the server actually understood our client hello said okay that seems like a sensible set of uh, uh, values we will be able to continue it sends them the server hello, and we know that will be that we are compatible with it. If it do, it isn't the case, then servers either will send an alert or just close the connection. Both of those situations will be detected by the fuzzer, and the test case will fail. Um, okay, so if we want to make a complete connection this will be look like uh, this will look something like that so we again have the client hello generator um, expect uh, then we expect the server hello then some ser some uh, more messages which are typical for the communication and uh, at this point we send to the server some kind of data here it could be like a HTTP get or something like that and then we can expect um, application data from the server, so we can uh, on the on the TLS protocol fuzzer level we can detect uh, where uh, well basically we can do HTTPS requests and stuff like that, and then we have a uh, regular uh, connection close. So we tell that uh, we want to close the connection, and for the close the, of the connection, uh, the server should uh, reply with close notify also, and then ex uh, we expect that. Um, TCP connection to be closed to. Now, uh, uh, me, we can also test for uh, vulnerabilities. In OpenSSL, we had a problem where the server would accept uh, the change cipher spec uh, message uh, too early in. Uh, communication that would cause the connection to establish uh, predictable uh, keys for the encryption and integrity checks. So if we want to see what happens, we basically have to remove all those red messages. And that's what, that what we uh, end up with. So we send the change cipher spec too early. And if we send it too early, we expect the unexpected message from the other side. <coughs> We can also create malformed messages. So uh, we can like create a regular client hello and then tell it truncate that message, that hunching message, by four bytes. And uh, as, a res uh, as a result, we should get a decode error, which indicates that the server has uh, noticed that that message is malformed because it's missing the, those four last bytes. And uh, then you should close the connection. Uh, I've also added recently uh, some automation for that. So uh, you can set up uh, how to set, uh, how to basically start a server and what, what kind of tests to run against it. So uh, here we have an example for uh, OpenSSL. Uh, it sets it up with some test, uh, test certificates uh, and tell it, uh, tells it to 
accept connections on localhost on 4433 uh, uh, port. That uh, and against that server will run those two test cases. Uh, this can also tell it that uh, you can exclude some test cases. You can tell it that uh, yeah, for that version of OpenSSL, let's say, um, that the, the test script should fail and stuff like that. So you can make sure that uh, you don't have false uh, positives uh, and false negatives. Uh, uh, by uh, while running it. So if we run this example, we'll get basically this kind of uh, result that will tell us that yeah, uh, it ran that test, uh, there were no errors, so it doesn't print anything, it's, it's finished, and another test, and uh, again finished, uh, then killed the server, server was killed by the, uh, by the sick, term, uh, sick term signal, and it ran uh, in the uh, in overall five uh, test cases, uh, Non passed, no, non failed. Uh, so two scripts passed and zero failed. Now, for the features, uh, we support uh, SSL version two and up till version TLS one point two. Uh, most of the ciphers, so uh, AES, CBC, GCM, uh, ChaCha20, mm, this is all supported. Uh, most of the, basically all of the uh, HMAX uh, are supported. Uh, key exchange, uh, uh, both uh, with RSI keys, uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange and elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Mm, some uh, new extensions, so encrypt then, uh, then Mac, uh, secure renegotiation, fallback CSV, extended master secret. And um, also we support the uh, draft uh, next protocol negotiation and the actually um, standardized application layer protocol negotiation. This is necessary for HTTP2 uh, negotiation. Uh, finite field Diffie Hellman group negotiation. This is uh, actually part of the support for TLS 1.3. Uh, TLS 1.3 will depend on this functionality and also the server name indication as I showed before. Unfortunately, as well, most pro projects, uh, most of the stuff is uh, in progress. Uh, we are uh, missing support for TLS 1.3. Uh, we have just parts of it. Uh, Mm, we also uh, are working on uh, RSA PSS uh, and X25519. This will probably come in the next uh, two months or something like that. Uh, we don't have support for PSK, Camellia uh, ciphers, and uh, one of the big things is that we don't have support for ECDSA keys, unfortunately. Uh, and the, the upside is that currently something like 90% of the internet uses uh, RSA keys, so it's not uh, such such a big uh, such a hurry to to to, to support it. Uh, we also don't have heartbeat protocol, so unfortunately I cannot show you the heartbleed example uh, and uh, Kerberos uh, fr from more obscure things. If you want to contribute, uh, the uh, Unfortunately, uh, we cannot see. But uh, if you can, uh, if you want to contribute, the whole code is uh, and script examples and stuff like that is uh, on GitHub on the um, uh, TLS Fuzzer uh, repo. Uh, TLS Fuzzer internally uses uh, TLS Light and G uh, implementation. This is a pure Python TLS implementation uh, that uh, I, st I used for. Uh, for the for the crypto stuff and basically like a, a, as a um, library to code against and test against uh, the fuzzer is under gpl version 2 and tls light ng is under lgpl version 2 uh, tags unfortunately you cannot read them but tags review request and up for grabs are for people that want to contribute to stuff that i would like uh, and i think that are uh, easiest to contribute to. So uh, if you want to uh, take a look and see if you, anything, uh, if you don't find anything fancy, go, go ahead and uh, I'll gladly uh, review that pull request. Questions? Any questions? Sure. 
Why is GNU PG a missing feature in TLS? You had it on your slides. So the GNU PG is basically supported now only by uh, GNU TLS, uh, nothing else. And uh, actually, most likely it will go out from, from that too. There's no plans for to add support for GNU PG to TLS 1.3 and it's incompatible with it. So it's unlikely we'll, uh, we'll mm, see it and most likely uh, it will be simply removed from, from GNU PG. Uh, GNU TLS, sorry. So uh, you mentioned that uh, you can like truncate the uh, packet and stuff. Uh, can you also modify individual fields, for example? So you have a length field, uh, uh, maybe some client or uh, well, some library is incompatible if you have uh, more data in an extension or less data than specific like length. Yes, so um, the question was if I can do any kind of other modifications. Yes, I can. Uh, there is a lot of um, uh, modifiers uh, or like uh, mutators, let's call them, uh, to the packets. I can uh, inject changes uh, uh, on the handshake protocol level. So I can modify bytes, I can insert bytes, I can XOR them with certain values. Uh, I can, uh, of course, set any kind of values I want in the array. So if I want a longer array, I can uh, just add uh, stuff to it. Uh, and also, uh, I can can inject changes uh, while uh, the encryption is taking place. So uh, in default TLS, you the the situation uh, the encryption goes like this: you first uh, have data, then you uh, calculate MAC over it so that there's integrity checks, and I can modify that uh, MAC value. Then you have uh, added padding. And again, again, I can modify that padding using the, this, those kind of mutators. And only after that, it is uh, encrypted. And that encrypted data, I, I can again modify at, the, at uh, arbitrary places. We have time for a few more questions. So what are your testing experience with existing implementations? I mean, especially also TLS hardware accelerators. I mean, you don't have to mention names, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but how, how, how often does uh, a TLS server crash with your, when being accessed with your library? So the uh, overall experience is that if you can imagine some kind of error and bug, you will find it on the internet. Uh, and I haven't tested much uh, servers, uh, like typical typical accelerators and stuff like that. Uh, we are focusing on the stuff we ship in RHEL, so that's NSS, GNU TLS, and uh, OpenSSL. Uh, from those, uh, there, there, there are differences. Uh, um, in NSS, it's usually quite good. Uh, with OpenSSL, it's uh, not exactly uh, not exactly stellar, and GNU TLS is similar uh, as far as uh, RFC compliance goes. Uh, I wasn't able to crash in, in the, either of them. Um, the, mostly the problems are uh, of the, um, like they uh, accept malformed messages when they shouldn't, uh, but they interpret that data quite sensibly. So this is, in 99% of the cases, this is not exploitable. Uh, but, you know, uh, better safe than sorry. That's my opinion with uh, dealing with that, uh, that kind of problems. If I understood correctly, you're not generating any like uh, fuzzing payload yourself, is it? Like it's it's not that you would generate random test cases, but rather you predefine your tests, right? Have you uh, looked into, say, Scapy, for example, what what these guys are doing? And um, I don't know, is there any any plan to convert uh, to Scapy, say? Uh, so. The payloads are uh, generated using the, the, the TL, TLS fuzzer, uh, so uh, 
the problem the problem is that you have the encryption in uh, in place so you have to make sure that uh, like uh, you you have to fuzz the data before the it is encrypted usually uh, and uh, scapi was actually one of the uh, libraries I was looking at uh, before uh, before writing it uh, before uh, starting to work on TLS fuzzer I uh, I, uh, I noticed that it is very hard to keep that state that is necessary for encryption in uh, in SCAPI to be able to generate uh, the, the the finished message because finished messages needs to be uh, encrypted so uh, basically that was one of the mm, libraries I I excluded from 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 using because. I couldn't use. Uh, I couldn't basically test uh, test using it the first bug I was working on. So. Okay. Thank you, Hubert. And we have a five minutes break.